sinning and a lot of, of, of adultery and so on, and so the church tightened up the screws. For instance, Catholics cannot marry validly except in front of a priest, and it must go in the parish register. That's a tightening up. Well, the, the, the Freemasons say those tightenings up are, 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 are not important and, and need to be heeded. What the state says counts as to what makes marriage valid. A chest, vows of chest is similar. It's a, it's, a, it's a particular point. Um, 73 is interesting. The error is that Christians can marry before, in front of the state without it being or without it having to be a sacrament. That's it. Two errors. If Christians marry, it's going to be a sacrament really many. But they don't have the right to marry in front without a priest. Um, and then 74, marriage cases and betrothal cases come under state jurisdiction. No, they come under church jurisdiction. 75, 76, the conclusion, the grand conclusion, which is which center on the Pope and the Monarch of the World 75 and 76, the Pope, some Catholics don't accept that the spiritual power can also have worldly power. In other words, 75 says, not all Catholics are agreed, the Catholics are divided on the point, therefore it's not a certain point. It's not, it's not church doctrine because many Catholics don't believe it. No, that's an error. Even if there are, if there are Catholics who don't believe them on this point, they're not Catholic. The, the spiritual power can also have worldly power. It belongs to the spiritual power by the will of God that it should also have a measure of temporal power, enough temporal power to ensure its spiritual power, to protect in this naughty world its spiritual power. It doesn't need more, and it should have more, but it, that which it should have. The pontifical states were a great help to the, part, the independence of the, of the papacy. When the Masons took those pontifical states, the church had a serious problem until the Lateran Treaty of 1927 under Mussolini, 28 or 29, towards the end of the 1920s. And thanks to Mussolini, the Vatican again became an independent state within the city of Rome. 77, 78, 79, and 80 are all crucial principles. Today, Catholicism should no longer be a state religion. Ooh. Ooh, that's Vatican II. And Archbishop V. Obstum pointed out how uh, this, Paul VI pushed Franklin to stop Catholicism being the state religion of Spain. Franklin didn't want to do it, but Paul VI twisted his arm to Paul VI did not like Franklin because Franklin was not the Pope. On some point, but that he he was not nearly as liberal as Pope Paul VI was, and so Pope Paul VI twisted him until he did it. Today, Catholicism is no longer state religion. Catholicism should be wherever possible a state religion because it will be a great help to the salvation of souls. For that reason, if the if, if it's the state religion, then state and church are united, and the uh, the state will do much more to help souls to get to heaven. It will not make laws favoring, favoring divorce, favoring abortion, favoring all of these great crimes which burden men's souls and take them to hell. So, 78, it is right for Catholic states to allow the public practice of other religions. That's pure Vatican II. Vatican II made exactly that error in Dignitatis Humanae. 
It taught that it is better for the Catholic Church to allow, the Catholic, the Catholic State should allow public practice of other religions. It belongs to the right, rights of human nature, said Vatican II. Vatican II is liberal. Vatican II is wrong. Vatican II is the destruction of the Church. 79. To allow the public, to allow the public practice of non-Catholic religions does not corrupt the people. Oh. Error. The, the public practice of non-Catholic religions, which are bound to be not true, the public practice of non-Catholic religions does corrupt the people because it makes easier lies and falsehood. In a, in, a, in a Catholic state, if it's possible and wise, if it's possible and prudent, the, pro the public practice of false religions will be banned to protect the faith of the citizens so that it will be easier for the citizens to go to them. And lastly, the Pope must move with modern times and the Pope must be progressive and the Pope must be liberal. That's a real nice one to finish off with and it's an error. <laughs> so, Pope Pius X, Pope Pius IX was saying, no, the Pope does not need to be modern. The Pope does not need to be progressive. And the Pope does not need to be liberal. Our Archbishop Fair used to say, the, the, our Lord Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's a quotation from St. Paul. He is neither liberal nor reformed. But Vatican II thought you, that our Lord was both liberal and reformed. Uh, I know some of you are pressed for time. It's been a great pleasure. Uh, if some of you need to leave, please by all means do. It's now a quarter for six. It's a quarter to a quarter to five. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I'm certainly willing to answer, answer any questions for a little. But time is passing and Monday reapproaches. Yes. Well, it will be my last question. But yes. Uh, as a Catholic. We profess and believe that the church can't err when it's about teaching about the faith and moral. Yes. And we believe that there is no error in the syllabus. And we believe it not because we have read and studied the syllabus. And we say, okay, point one is okay, yeah, okay. Well, we believe it because it's a teaching of the church. Yes. So how can it be possible that the church today, who is teaching since 50 years, a lot of errors in encyclical, Very good law, can be the true church? Uh, because the modern mind is no longer, has no longer a grasp of truth, of unchanging truth. The modern mind is Hegelian. The modern mind seriously believes that truth evolves. That's number one. Uh, yeah, but the true church is supposed to teach the, the true things. Then the church then today this, is not teaching the true things, so I think it can be a true church. Then in this respect, the Vatican II Church is not the Catholic Church in this respect. It's impossible for the Catholic Church to teach the contrary. You're right. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, in, in what respects is the Vatican II Church Catholic? Uh, well, <laughs> we'll be here until then. <laughs> uh, I will lose my plans. No more questions. Okay, well done. It's a very good question. Yeah. Thank you. There's no, there's no easy answer.